Hey everybody, this is Jennifer Magill. I'm the founder and the executive director for Designers for Learning. Tomorrow I have a fun opportunity to go and present an overview of Designers for Learning at the Chicago Literacy Alliance CONFAB. It's being held here in Chicago at the Weinberg Newton Gallery. So I decided to fire up the recording and record myself as I go through my slides as I'm practicing so I can share what the content of our presentation will be tomorrow for those who may be interested in learning more about Designers for Learning. So what I'm going to cover tomorrow is an overview of what we do at Designers for Learning, how we do it, why we do it, and what's next. And hopefully I'll motivate you or others to join us as we um, continue, our, continue our programming uh, toward our mission. So what do we do? What is our mission? Our mission is to crowdsource the design of open educational resources to help adults improve their literacy skills for career and college readiness. So what does that mean? That's a, that's a mouthful. And rather than spending time now defining it, what I'm going to do is instead give you a snapshot of the pro programming we've done in the past as well as the programming we plan to do and give you a better sense for what it is uh, that, that this mission statement is and how we internalize this and make it something that we can, um, can give, give back to adult learners. So here's an example. The Adult Learning Zone is something that we've created. It's programming that we have done to create open educational resources for adults um, to learn new skills, new academic skills, and workplace skills uh, that are embedded in real-world contexts that will help adults with low literacy skills and low math skills. These lessons were were designed and prepared by volunteers. 100% of, of all the lessons have been prepared by volunteers who are joining us with the hope of gaining skills on their own. They want to become instructional designers and better instructional designers or just to give back. And so they're joining us as volunteers to design these lessons for the benefit of adult educators and adult learners. All of these lessons are released under what's called a Creative Commons license, which, which simply means that um, through the permissions granted within the license, people are able to distribute and copy and share and reuse these resources uh, freely without need for additional permission. And um, an important consideration for those of you who are in adult education, all of our um, resources are aligned to the College and Career Readiness Standards. So these are the standards that underlie all of the high school equivalency exams. Um, so, for example, the GED that most of us in this room are probably familiar with. So who are these people that uh, would, would take time out of their busy schedules to volunteer with us? Um, we have a cross-section of people from all different types of backgrounds. We have literally thousands of people who have volunteered with us. We have 40, uh, about 4,000 people who have um, raised their hand to volunteer as part of our service learning projects, which we'll talk about in a moment. And these include instructional design students who are trying to build a portfolio and prepare for job interviews and, um, and get ready to, to move out and to be professionals in the field of instructional design, as well as adult educators who are interested in gaining skills in curriculum design. It's also a mix of college faculty or other subject matter experts or professional designers who want to give back and uh, work with us in some type of facilitation or mentorship role. And so all of these people come together and help us to crowdsource the design of these open resources, open educational resources, through large-scale volunteer service learning projects. And I'll spend a couple minutes talking about specifically what that means. Since I said we have large-scale projects and with people from across the globe, um, it makes sense then that all of our programming would be virtual. So none of our programming, even though we're based here in Chicago, none of our programming is necessarily done specifically in Chicago. Uh, we use um, a, a, network called, or a, a platform called Canvas Network. It is a platform that allows, it's like a learning management system that allows us to run our virtual service learning projects um, on, the, on the internet. And so that is how we manage this, the, the large scale volunteer service learning projects. We also have then smaller scale projects, still virtual, still online, uh, but they enroll between maybe 100 to 200 people, still large, but not as big as our massive open online courses. 
and um, and those are specific tar specifically targeted to skills that designers are trying to uh, improve. So these aren't necessarily, the deliverables aren't necessarily going to the benefit of the adult education program, but more it's the professional development of our instructional designers, helping them become better at what they do so they can, um, can help us in turn make better resources available to our adult learners. And right now, for example, we have a course that is running, a professional development course uh, for mobile learning strategies. So we're teaching instructional designers and, and educators how to use mobile devices and off-the-shelf applications in an educational context and to help use that within, um, within an instructional context with their learners. And then finally, we offer a host of webinars and networking opportunities through all the major uh, social networking platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and um, in our webinar series, we, we have a, a standing every, I think it's the second Thursday of every month, uh, we have a webinar called Designer Designer Dialogues. It's a webcast series. It's an informal meeting um, meetup, allowing people from across the globe again, whoever logs in, to be able to talk to each other, talk about projects that they're working on in our in our courses or in our service learning projects, or something that just is of interest to them in the instructional design field. So why do we do it? Why why do we go <laughs> through all of this? Um, at, the, at the heart of what we do is really the, um, the millions of adult learners who are in need. The, the, the statistics are staggering, and while I wish I, I could spend time today going through personal stories of, of people who are, are in, this, in, in this situation, uh, the statistics alone are, are pretty, pretty staggering and pretty, pretty telling. Uh, one adult in six are deemed to be struggling with low literacy skills. So taken against the entire U.S. population, that's roughly 33 million adults are struggling with low literacy skills. And unfortunately, due to lack of funding, less than 5% of those are, who are in need are served by government-funded programs, which leaves either the, um, the individual to either not get support or to get it through um, an, an associate or an agency or nonprofit that is getting its funding some from somewhere other than the government, and so the funding is, in, is as you would imagine, quite scarce for um, for these individuals. And we also do it for the support of the teachers in the adult education space. Uh, most of the teachers are part time teachers. About seventy percent are part time, and another fifteen percent are volunteers. And unfortunately, these teachers and learners are um, faced with, again, a lack of funding, which then translates into a dearth of adult learning resources that are specifically tailored to their needs and also um, very low technology access relative to what may be found in a typical K-12 classroom. In addition, another challenge is that a large percentage of the, the learners in these classrooms are um, learning English as a second language, about 40% are English language learners nationally, and that's about 60% in the state of Illinois. So it's, a, it's even higher in the, in the state of Illinois. So what's next for designers for learning? What are, what are we focused on next? We've spent the better part of the last six months in, as part of our membership at the Chicago Literacy Alliance meeting with adult educators, and in some cases their learners, to try to understand the need and the opportunity for us to be able to give back and to serve. And we've come up with three categories of, of need that we are focused on going forward. The first being adult literacy library. So this is creating a, a resource portfolio of, of leveled high interest readings that are embedded within context and, and topics that are relevant to an adult. As I mentioned, uh, there's a, quite a disparity between what's available for adult learners as compared to K-12. In addition to that, we're focused on micro-learning experiences. So these are short-duration learning activities uh, and exercises that are available to promote practice and offer immediate feedback. This is in contrast to full-blown curriculum development, which, again, you may be more familiar with on the K-12 side. On the adult education side, um, it, it's more tailored to working on specific practice opportunities for specific skills and skill gaps that may, the learner may face. And in turn, that uh, relates then to our, our third category on the right, the performance-based. These are a little bit more uh, broadly focused activities, learning activities to assess performance of targeted skills and competencies. 
and, and oftentimes related to skills that may be applicable to the learner in a workplace setting. So these are the three areas that we're focusing on, but what I wanted to do for my remaining time today is talk to you about the development of our project to build out an adult literacy library. So an adult literacy library, what we're talking about, again, is our high interest leveled readings. And we're really working closely with our educators here in Chicago to help us to scope this project. We've been working with Lindsay Cramond as well as um, Emily Tolzman, who's here, and other educators here in Chicago who work with uh, a population of learners with very low reading levels. And we're hearing again and again uh, this need for resources, reading resources, informational texts that the, they can work on in the classroom with the teacher. And so Lindsay has shared with us a couple examples here, one on the left and one on the right, of some resources that she has built using a template that was put together by Becky DeForest. Um, Becky, as many of you know, some of you may know in this room, uh, in the room tomorrow we'll, um, we'll know from Literacy Works. And it's a template that allows uh, someone to come in and add the text and then to add images that are relevant to the learner. So in this example, Lindsay took pictures of herself, other teachers, um, the classroom setting, things that are familiar to the learner. And then um, what's really unique about this is the uh, ability of the teacher then to, to be able to download this the printout once it's created, uh, fold it, staple it, put it in a book format, and then use it in the classroom setting and then give it to the student to be able to take home, which in many cases is one of the first books that the student has been able to read and then actually take home and consider it a book, their first book in their library. So it's, it's a pretty powerful tool and our goal is to be able to work with our volunteer network to be able to build a, a, a portfolio of these leveled readers for adults in various contexts and in various topics. So our crowdsourcing process to do this is much the same as we, we, we follow in, in all of our projects. We spend a, an incredible amount of time defining the project, working with our subject matter experts, with our teachers, those who will be using these resources. Uh, once we define the specs for the project, we have a call for volunteers. We again have a vast network. When we send out an email, it goes to about 5,500 people. Um, those that are interested in volunteering sign up. If it's, for example, in our course, which is the on Canvas network, they'll actually sign up as though they were joining a course for us, a service learning course. Um, they'll go ahead and design and develop these materials with the support of facilitators um, who take on a mentorship role to give them feedback throughout the design and development process. And then what we're, what we're most excited about is, is the ability now with our, our network of contacts here at the Chicago Literacy Alliance is to expand our use of user testing so we can then work with teachers, work with learners to see how are these wor resources working in their classroom. Is it working? Are there things we should be doing differently, things we should tweak and test? And then finally, the evaluation and the research component, which is always a big part of our work. We find it really important that no matter what we're doing on the design and development side, it's really important that we evaluate it and then report out that research um, either at conferences or in, uh, in academic publications and journal articles that, um, that, that we produce as part of our um, kind of the, the capstone of every project that we work on. So here's where you come in. Let's collaborate. As I mentioned time and time again, and every time you talk to me about the Chicago Literacy Alliance, the, the best part of the experience is the ability to collaborate and to, to work with others who share a common mission. And so if you are a teacher, or you work with adult learners, we very much want to talk to you and speak with you. And um, if you're in a creative field, such as a writer, an editor, or maybe you're a subject matter expert in literacy or some other related topic, um, certainly raise your hand and let us know that you're interested in working with us. Um, and also on other creative fields such as artists or um, our designers or developers, we are looking for all of the all of the above. And then finally, last but certainly not least, on the funding side of the house, I, I mentioned it before. It cannot be overstated that there is a, a scarcity of funds available for adult education programs as well as resources for adult educators and learners. And so we have. Been, we've been trying hard to better understand what it is the funders are interested in funding. 
and we're hearing from from funders that if the um, the project aligns not only academic skill development but also workplace and workforce development skill training um, that is the, has the highest likelihood of, of being something of interest to funders. So if you have any ideas on how we could work on grants together or ways that um, we could collaborate or if you happen to be a funder and this is uh, what I've said today may be of interest to you, please do reach out to us. The best way to reach us is through our website at designersforlearning.org contact. So thank you.